Hey guys. Well, welcome to Michaela Motivational Monday on a Thursday. It's Thursday. But at least I'm doing it this week, right? Better than nothing, I think. Monday was my son's birthday, his 10th birthday, and we had a party. And I mean, it was a small party. But it's, I thought, you know what? On Thursday, and then Tuesday was super busy with some stuff. Um, actually, a lot of child trafficking research and conversations. I'm figuring out a way to be truly useful to that cause. So more on that soon. And then yesterday was taxes day. I had to work on my taxes because I'm about to go shoot a movie, a Christmas movie. And well, a couple of weeks. And um, yeah, I'm really excited about that. But I have when you're going to like suddenly be shooting, there's just stuff you got to catch up on and stuff you got to do in advance and everything. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. I don't have to make it every Monday. I don't. It's not every Monday. But then today I was like, wait, I'm going on Home and Family. I got to uh, tape an episode of Home and Family today, which is why my hair is done like professionally, which is so fun. <sighs> you often require motivation on a Thursday. <laughs> um, oh, I age. I've got wrinkles. This, you know, these phones, the, these devices, they, plus I've got good lighting, they fill stuff in. I look in the mirror, which is right next to me. It's like close, but this is smoothed out. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, just my week was busy. And today I thought, oh, I'm doing home and family, so I'll be in hair and makeup and I'll do motivational that day. So it's not, you saw me on Entertainment Tonight. I didn't get a chance to see that segment. So I did a segment for Entertainment Tonight uh, about, I talked about a couple of things, talked about my book, The Times Machine, which I talked about today on Home and Family. That episode airs Monday, by the way. And I also on Entertainment Tonight talked about Young Justice as part of the DC fandom, which is this big free event um, they did the first half on August 22nd and then September 12th, which is coming up, they're going to have a whole bunch of, um, uh, well, somebody else saw AT also cool. They're going to have um, a whole bunch of like videos and panels. And I did a panel with some of the other young justice cast and we actually recorded a new episode of young justice, but it's season 3.9. So it's in between the two seasons. Anyway, it's just us reading it, but it was really fun. I got to play both Miss Martian, which I usually do, and also Tuppence Terror, which is another character that I've played before on the show. Anyway, so that is September 12th, and I talked about that on ET, but I never got to see the finished product because when I did the interview, they thought the whole thing was going to be on August 22nd. So I was saying, yeah, tune in August 22nd. So they obviously cut that part out. Any ideas about motivation to work out while suffering from depression? Yes, actually. Um, now, I cannot speak much about clinical depression because I really don't know and I've not experienced that myself. I don't think. I mean, who knows? I've never been evaluated as such. Um, but uh, yes, I will talk about that in a moment. What I want to talk about today, after I do a few shout outs, and I will do some shout outs, so tell me your name and your city. So I can say, hey, so and so from like, hey, George, in like Jacksonville, Florida. Exactly. So, so you say you're from Brazil. Chris, Chris Avao? I think that's how you say that. So say your name and and where you're from for some shout outs. And then after that, I want to talk to talk to you guys about this idea of the mind body connection. And what we always talk about is something that's going to make us have a better week, right? Hey, Wes from Louisville, Kentucky, Scott from Orlando. Hey, uh, Josh from Ferris, Texas. Um, and this time I want to talk about the mind body connection, things we can do with our bodies that make our minds feel better <laughs> because <laughs> it's a challenging year. Isn't it? It is. Hey, Ubi in St. Louis. What happened? What happened over here? Oh, for some reason, the comment stopped scrolling. Why does that happen sometimes? Uh, hey, Anson from San Juan Capistrano. Mark from Pennsylvania. Guy from the UK. Tracy from Stowe, Ohio. Sean from Baltimore, Maryland. Daryl from St. Petersburg, Florida. Scott and, and Eloise from Davenport, Florida. A lot of Florida. Paula from Tucson. You have a DVD filled with Hallmark Christmas movies. Well, I'm going to make another one. <laughs> I'm about to shoot my 14th, 14th uh, Hallmark movie. My sixth Christmas movie for them. Sacramento, California. Yeah, Sacramento. You got a lot of smoke up there. Yeah. Man, I'm... Oh, these fires, you guys. The heat and the fun. It's just like, what else, 2020? Really? What else? I, I shouldn't say that. Because it might be something else. Well, we got the election coming up, so that's always going to be fun and games and a joyful, peaceful time, won't it? Won't that be? Anyway, 
So let's talk a moment about the mind-body connection because what we do with our bodies changes the way we feel. It has an effect. I want to tell a story partially for um, 14th Hallmark movie in six years. Um, I want to talk about something that happened to me in March of this year, late March. I was feeling, maybe it might have been early April, really, really, really depressed. Like, I couldn't stop crying. Like, I wanted to stop crying, and I couldn't stop crying. There was some stuff going on in my personal life, but also just everything, and just feeling the weight of the world, and just, like, it was just really, really hard for me. And I, I know I don't have to give excuses for why it was hard. Everybody has hard stuff going on, and, and everybody has their own stuff that nobody else knows about and all the rest of it. Anyway, it was really bad. Uh, a couple of days like that. And I just thought, what would I tell other people? Like, what would my advice be? And what was my, my husband it was like, it's like, try meditating just for like 10 minutes, try doing some yoga. And I just couldn't like wrap my brain around it. Um, but eventually I thought to myself, well, I can't do yoga because I'm I was like, I'm crying too much. I go, what if I just did yoga anyway, even though I'm crying and the tears were still falling? What if I just did yoga anyway? So it's called, I think it's called contrary action. Contrary to what I like wanted to do or felt like doing, I just, I was like, well, let's do this. Let's just, let's just try. And I'm like, on the bring up the yoga mat, crying, crying, put up the yoga mat, crying, crying, get into downward dog. And I'm like, tears are falling onto the yoga mat. And I just, and I, and, and I just, I was like, well, what if I just keep going? It's con contrary action, contrary to what I feel like doing. I'm just going to do this. And you know what? After about five minutes, I, the tears stopped. And I still didn't feel great, but I started to feel a little better, just a little better. When I, it seemed impossible, I started feeling a little bit better. And that is the mind-body connection. That's one example of it, where my body, I was stretching my body and getting it to move. And that changes the chemistry in your body, which changes your brain. It changes how you feel. It's really something. <laughs> Slipping hazard. Well, there weren't that many tears. It was all kind of falling in one in place. You need to stretch. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, do what you know is right and good despite how you feel about it. That is so true. Feelings aren't facts. Feelings are not facts. Yeah, <laughs> sad yoga. But sad yoga turned into feeling a little better yoga. It was really, it was a... Uh, the endorphins started to kick in. And now if you live in an area that has really bad air quality, then I don't want you to join me in the next thing you're going to do, which is like just some breathing. I mean, breathe, but be careful because there's fires going on. But another really, and yes, stretching, yoga, these are great things to do, but it can be challenging. And, and so to the person asking, wanting to work out, maybe you don't have yoga in your life. You don't really know what you're doing. You're not interested or whatever. You can do jumping jacks still. You can do push-ups, even if you're crying even if you are super depressed. You can do them. I know because I have some experience now. <laughs> and in <and laughs> yes, you've heard of hot yoga, but not crying yoga. The funny thing about that, Patrick, is that I've done hot yoga. And when you're in down dog, you can see the sweat is dripping off of your face onto the mat. And it reminded me of that. I, thought, I was like, wait, this reminds me of hot yoga. <laughs> but sad yoga turns into like better, better feelings. It's really something. Yes, I'm all done up because I was on TV this morning, uh, a show called Home and Family, and I actually had professional other people doing my hair and makeup. Everybody's wearing like hazmat suits, but uh, it was really great. Um, that'll air on Monday. So let's do some breathing. Um, just uh, the forced laughter of Tibetan monks. I've seen that. Have you guys seen that? You laugh. You just laugh, even if you don't, if you don't think anything's funny. And then that makes you laugh. And that actually, uh, it actually like works your stomach muscles. I've done that before too, but I, I didn't, I never tried it when I was feeling really divorced. I'm divorced, really depressed, <laughs> divorced. That was many years ago. Um, <laughs> feeling divorced. I guess that could be another way of saying feeling depressed. And I've never tried that. The forced laughter. Oh, that's why I said forced. It sounds like divorced. Anyway, um, why are my books reversed? Oh, you're seeing a flipped image. So let's do some, let's do some breathing. Um, <laughs> Freudian slip, yeah, because the last, honestly, the last time that I was feeling that bad was during my divorce, which was eight years ago, eight years ago. 
<clears throat> so here's the breathing technique I want to do. And by the way, I only have a couple more minutes. Um, so breathe all the way out. And then you're going to breathe all the way in. And then you're going to hold it. And when you're holding it, then you're going to take little extra sips in of breath. Like when you think you can't fill in any more air, a little more and a little more, a little more, and you'll feel it. Your lungs actually go all the way up here and you'll feel it. Focus on thinking about these areas of your lungs and you'll feel them kind of stretch a little. It's amazing. Okay, let's do it. All right. Breathe all the way out. Breathe in. Okay, now you're at the top. Can't breathe anymore, right? Well, picture this and I go. Hold it. One more time. Feel it. Hold it. Breathe in again. And then let it out. How many of you guys feel it right up here? I've done this before, yeah. Some of you guys remember it. Let's do it one more time. Breathe all the way out. And breathe in. Okay, now hold it. Breathe a little more. A little more. Feel, think about this area right here. Breathe in more. Hold it. <sighs> Breathe out. Ah, I, I can feel that. How many of you guys feel that? Your lungs go up into your hat. It is relaxing, right, Jimmy? Yeah. <sighs> and just breathing. Again, if you're in an area with really bad air quality, be careful. Make sure you've got a, I don't know, filter or something. You did it. You felt it. It's soothing, right, Dan? Yeah. You might pass out, Kim. <laughs> so don't do this while you're driving. Hope, hope nobody's driving while they're doing this. Yes. So breathing, um, stretching. Yes. Stretching is great. You felt that? Shining story? Excellent. You almost passed out? Yeah, it loosens. Yeah. And you can just kind of, oh, just, you know... Roll your neck around, roll your shoulder. Everybody roll your shoulders up and down. Everybody, not quickly, but slowly. Really feel it. Really slowly. And then the other way. Refocus zone. You might need to do it a few more times. Because as you breathe, you start to stretch things a little more, a little more. And you'll be able to feel it a little bit better. So try it some more. But don't pass out. So just, just, ah. Rolling. <laughs> breathing while driving is good, but not deep breathing and holding it. You felt it, Jorge? Very cool. It took a minute, but you felt it, Darlene? Awesome. Oh, I'm not ignoring you, Stuart. Stuart, you write me things like that all the time. I recognize your name. I'm not intentionally ignoring anybody. You guys, there's a lot of comments. Does this feel good? Oh, does it feel good? Shake out your arms. <sighs> the mind-body connection is real. So if you can do a little workout, even five minutes, I like to turn on music and just do stuff. Jumping jack, sit up, whatever it is. That was amazing. You felt it, Haley? So just remember that. When we are feeling stressed, when we are feeling depressed and sad, like we can't do anything, we can't go anywhere, we can't motivate for anything, making little physical changes to our bodies, whether it's breathing, stretching, yoga, 10 jumping jacks, 10 push-ups. Getting your blood circulating is a great way. Well, I can't really do that while I'm sitting here, but your, your shoulders sound like Rice Krispie Treat cereal popping. That, that's you breaking up stress right now. That's how great that is. Thank you, Bissalan. I thought about starting a podcast, but here's the thing. This is my podcast. This is it. Only it's better because I get to like talk with you guys too. And I do it, I do it once a week, just about. So, and nobody's telling me what to do. I can do whatever I want and I can show up whenever I can. There's no schedule. Oh, I feel like I can breathe better even just doing that. So then take that breathing, take that better feeling and taking that one step further, I would say, look for your purpose. Look for your purpose. Get curious. Why was I put on this planet? What can I, what help can I give right now? How can I be essential to somebody or to many people. Maybe it's a family member. You know, a lot of us have been told that we're not essential and to stay home, stay on your couch. We are essential. We can be essential. And you can do it from your couch. 
reach out to a friend, reach out to a loved one, reach out to your parents, reach out to your kids, your cousins, just check in on somebody and say, hey, just want to see how you're doing today. When first person pops into your head, you know, give them a call. Hey, Danica told me to call you. Danica said I should call you and just see how you're doing. Become essential to that person in that moment. You know, reach out, take care of yourself and then see how about how we can help others. Because I'll tell you something, having a purpose and feeling that purpose makes all the difference. You guys, I hope you remember the mind-body connection today uh, and this entire week. I will see you very soon on the Danny Cam. Thank you so much. Bye.